Warning, this video contains super awesome content not suitable for people who don't enjoy super awesomeness. Viewer discretion advised. This little girl in this back seat is so fucking fascinated of my motorcycle. I guess she doesn't understand the way of a mere advisor yet. Hi little girl. I should wave at her. Should I wave at her? Should I make her really uncomfortable and wave at her? I'm gonna wave at her if she looks back again. Look back again. Look it back. <laughs> she, she, she just hit. She just hit after I did that. <laughs> oh, it's funny. I love kids, man. I fucking love kids. Absolutely love kids, man. One day I'll have kids. In, in, in the future, five or six years, I'll have a little yummy. I fucking love kids, man. You ask anyone, I fucking absolutely love kids. I absolutely love playing with them, man. They're, they're so awesome. Kids, kids are our next generation, man. I know I'm still kind of a kid. I'm 21, but... They're so awesome. They're, they're such like magnificent little creatures. <laughs> Whoa, where the fuck am I? Holy shit, I'm downtown somewhere. Oh fuck! I don't even know where the fuck I am! Oh my god. I'm definitely downtown somewhere. Some small ass fucking piece of shit city. Like, like really? Really? Atlanta would shit on this place. What is this? Lawrenceville. I'm in Lawrenceville. I've heard of the place. Never been here. Alright, Lawrenceville. Actually, have I been here? What the fuck is this pile of dookie? This is the cutest little place I've ever seen in my life. Okay, one-way streets too. All right, this is fucking fantastic. All right, sweet. All right, we're going left, I guess. Fuck. All right, what's going on, everyone? So, guys, I want to do a vlog, a vlog today about something that I recently got. Uh, I know you guys are are gonna like fucking be like, oh, boring, yummy, so fucking boring. Don't want to hear it from you anymore, yummy. No one fucking cares about how much you like World War II, yummy. If you've been following my Instagram, um, my Facebook and stuff like that, you probably already know. I've already talked about it. Um, but I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be, um, uh, doing a whole bunch of collecting with World War II items. Um, if you guys saw, I recently just picked up, uh, a, a, a Moisen, or a Mausen, or a Mosen. It's Mosen. It's Mosen, but a lot of people call it different things, so I just say it in all the versions. Uh, a Mosen the Gaunt. Um, uh, not just a Mosen the Gaunt, though. A lot of people are like, oh my god, yummy, you could have picked up, you could have picked up fucking, uh, a Mosen for like a hundred dollars at a Cabela's. You guys don't understand, I don't want a Mosen the Gaunt to have a Mosen. Mosin the Gaunt. If I wanted a fucking Mosin the Gaunt to shoot, to just have, I would go down to Cabela's and buy a Mosin the Gaunt to shoot and just have. Um, I'm a big history goon with World War II. So I want a lot of stuff that has something to do with uh, World War II. And uh, the specific Mosin I bought was made in 38, 1938, uh, and was from, um, shit. And it was the grand, uh, the granddad of the guy selling it. It was his, his grandfather's, uh, and it was a GI bringback. Another thing I'll be picky about with like stuff that I get is GI bringbacks. Uh, I, o I only want GI bringbacks. Um, I know that sounds kind of stupid, but I don't want any import marks. Um, if you guys don't know anything about that, import marks basically means it was imported to the United States or imported to wherever. Um, and it wasn't a GI bringback. It was just kind of, it was just kind of like pushed along into the, uh, into the goddamn, um, what do you call those places? Uh, the supply places. They were just pushed along in there. Um, not saying that I only want GI bringbacks. I just don't want anything imported, if that makes sense. I just, I just don't want it. I want something that was, has a little more sentimental value, you know? 
Um, like for example, there was this M1 Garand that I was looking into and I actually didn't end up getting it because it was a little too expensive for me right now. Um, but it was actually produced um, in June of 1944. Uh, and if you guys aren't aware, June 1944 was the uh, uh, Operation uh, Invasion, the Invasion of Normandy, which featured D-Day and a whole bunch of other crazy missions that happened. Um, that guy just ran across the street and almost got fucking hit. What an idiot. Um, so, I really wanted that M1 Garand, but I didn't end up getting it. It was just a little too pricey for me. Um, but, basically I want rifles that have some value to them in the background. Not so much in the foreground, um, as well as, as far as shooting. A lot of people are like, oh, you're going to love shooting it. And I'm trying to tell you guys, I know this sounds weird to you guys, but I don't buy these guns to shoot them. I buy them to put them in cases and collect them. Um, it it's, means a lot to me. I don't know why it means so much to me, but uh, World War II hits me heavy in the heart. Uh, and it's just something I'm very passionate about. Um, so uh, I was actually uh, looking at this M1 carbine um, that was has a full write-up. Like a full documented write-up. The thing's $2,500. Uh, and the guy that owns it is still alive. And there's pictures of him in the war. Like in World War II, there's pictures of him holding that ex exact carbine of him in the war. That is who he is. He's in his 90s. Uh, it's, it's him. It's him in the war with the carbine as like maybe a 20-year-old or, or whatever. Um, and, and just numerous amount of pictures. And there's marks on the carbine that you can see in the pictures that you can see on the carbine to this day. Uh, and it's something so cool that I would love to have, but obviously $2,500 is way out of my range. But it is it is what it is. But I just want to show you guys the the, uh, the Mosin. Mosin, Mosin, whatever you guys want to call it. Uh, at some point, he picked up the rifle um, and brought it home. It wasn't his rifle, but he picked it up. And it's a Russian, uh, it is a Russian Mosin Nagant. Um, but it has a German 98K Mauser sling on it um, that was on the rifle when he picked it up. Um, so it isn't the first time, or it's, it's not, it's not... Okay, so it's not, uh, it's not, what is that fucking word I'm looking for? It's not uncommon, there you go. It's not uncommon for uh, soldiers during World War II to pick up enemy rifles um, and to pick up uh, any type of rifle they can find or gun and use it um, due to the lack of ammo in, in several situations. Uh, now the 98K Mauser was very good compared to the uh, compared to the Mosin, but uh, during during the last stands of Berlin. Um, civilians fought and they didn't have a shit ton of guns to go around for civilians and not only civilians but for the soldiers the last stand if you will in Berlin um, so it's, the rifles believed to be picked up by a German at some point during the war um, after the gun was picked up by a German at some point it was then remantled with a uh, 98k Mauser sling um, and you can look at the sling it's very worn uh, and a 98k K Mauser sling comes off of, comes off of a German gun um, so whole, basically the background story is is that the gun at some point was dropped somewhere along the line somewhere either fell off a ship fell off a plane fell off a soldier whatever it was dropped somewhere it was picked up by a German the German put his sling on it and the German used it until he dropped it at some point and then the gun was found by the granddad of the guy I bought it from and that's basically that. And that's that's kind of how it ended. And now I ha now I have the gun, and uh, it's something that I'm going to cherish. Something I'm going to case. Uh, you know, you guys out there can doubt the story or whatever. Do whatever you want. Say whatever you want. Um, I take the man's word for it. Um, I know you can't believe everybody, but I take the man's word for it. Um, it wouldn't just have the sling on it. I don't know who would really buy an 98k Mauser sling, put it on. But whatever. Um, but I'm going to go with it. That's kind of how it's going to work. But I'm really excited about this gun. Regardless, it was made in 38, um, right before the pre-war era. And uh, it's pretty cool to have. I'm pretty excited to have it. Uh, my next gun I'm going to be getting is uh, American Guns. I want to get an M1 Garand. I want to get an M1 Carbine. Uh, I want to get a semi-automatic uh, Thompson. Obviously, you can't get the real ones, but I, I just want one to actually shoot and have. But, uh, but yeah, so that's really my story, guys. Uh, I want to hear from you gun collectors. Is there anyone in my YouTube era? If, is there someone?
anyone out there that is a gun collector um, from World War II era? And if so, what do you guys have? I'm very curious along those lines. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and sit here and end the vlog here, guys. I need to find home because I'm not sure where I'm at. But, um, but yeah, guys, seriously, I want to know... I want to know uh, some stuff from you guys, if you guys collect guns, and if so, what do you guys collect? Oh my god, look at this rice cannon. Oh, the rice cannon to the max right here. Oh, bye rice cannon. I'm going to go ahead and show you up now. Ah, I just had to do that in his face real quick. Alright, anyways, I'm out of here guys. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next vlog. Peace out.